July 1st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Corinthians, Chapter 12 from the New Testament. With regard to spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were often led astray by speechless idols, however you were led. So I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus is cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are different gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are different ministries, but the same Lord. And there are different results, but the same God who produces all of them in every one. To each person the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the benefit of all. For one person is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom, and another the message of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another performance of miracles, to another prophecy, and to another discernment of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. It is one and the same Spirit, distributing as he decides to each person, who produces all these things. For just as the body is one and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so too is Christ. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks or slaves or free, we were all made to drink of the one Spirit. For in fact the body is not a single member, but many. If the foot says, Since I am not a hand, I am not part of the body, it does not lose its membership in the body because of that. And if the ear says, Since I am not an eye, I am not part of the body, it does not lose its membership in the body because of that. If the whole body were an eye, what part would do the hearing? If the whole were an ear, what part would exercise the sense of smell? But as a matter of fact, God has placed each of the members in the body just as he decided. If they were all the same member, where would the body be? So now there are many members, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you. Nor in turn can the head say to the foot, I do not need you. On the contrary, those members that seem to be weaker are essential. In those members we consider less honorable, we clothe with greater honor, and our unpresentable members are clothed with dignity. But our presentable members do not need this. Instead, God has blended together the body, giving greater honor to the lesser member, so that there may be no division in the body, but the members may have mutual concern for one another. If one member suffers, everyone suffers with it. If a member is honored, all rejoice with it. Now you are Christ's body, and each of you is a member of it. And God has placed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, gifts of healing, helps, gifts of leadership, different kinds of tongues. Not all are apostles, are they? Not all are prophets, are they? Not all are teachers, are they? Not all perform miracles, do they? Not all have gifts of healing, do they? Not all speak in tongues, do they? Not all interpret, do they? But you should be eager for the greater gifts. And now I will show you a way that is beyond comparison. God, I come to you today and ask that you help guide people that as members of a body sometimes it's really hard to know if you're the foot or the hand or the eye or what part you're supposed to be sometimes it's hard to know what your gifts are much less understand how to use them best in your will i have a lot of friends who are asking me about this right now and god i just pray for their hearts they so want to serve you they want to be part of this body but they're just not really sure where they fit in and they're trying out different ministries to figure out what that looks like 
God, help guide them. Show them what their gifts are. Help them understand the dynamics of their gifts. Because even if, if people have similar types of gifts, it doesn't mean that they're going to use them in the same way. And help them remember that it's not the sparkly ministries necessarily <laughs> that you want them uh, to work at. Uh, that just because they're attracted to one type of ministry may or may not be the ministry you want them to work in. But I know, God, that you will show them if they pray with their heart uh, to, ha to have your will in their life, that you will show them the direction you want them to go. Maybe it's to start a ministry. Maybe it's to work within something within the church. Maybe it's to be a missionary. There's there's so many opportunities in your body. And as this section talks about, you actually already decided which part of this membership, this body we're going to have. God, what a great honor to be part of your body, to be one of your children. And I know ultimately we all want to work together for your purpose here on earth. But boy, we're sure clumsy in getting there. <laughs> for that I'm... I'm incredibly sorry. Um, help guide our hearts. We so want to be part of that body, God. And we let our humanists take over and our egos take over and instead of your will take over. Allow people who haven't found their place in your body yet to just listen to that voice inside of them. Allow your will to be happening in their life and in their heart. God, I know you have planned for each and every one of us to do amazing things for your kingdom. Help show them what that actually is. In your son's name I pray. Amen.